Welcome! In this series of videos, we will look at topics common to both the PowerBasic console and Windows compilers. Today we will look at the definition and use of parameters in both subroutines and functions. In this series of videos, we will be covering topics which are common to both the PowerBasic Windows compiler and the PowerBasic console compiler. In order to do this, I have set up a small common library to allow us to display information on the screen from a program regardless of whether you are using the Windows or the console compiler. There are three basic functions in this common display library. There is prep output, log and wait. The prepare output function takes a console name as a parameter, an x and a y start coordinates and optional rows and columns. Since this code is designed to work regardless of whether you have the console or the Windows compiler, we are using a conditional if statement which is handled at compile time to test if we are actually inside the console compiler or not. So you will see in here there is an if def pbcc32 which if that is set up we are in the console compiler and it will prepare the functions accordingly. If we are in the Windows compiler, the same three functions will be prepared, but internally they will be slightly different. So for the console compiler, we are using a standard console window, and for the Windows compiler, we are using a, a text window. To look at parameters, let's first create a local value. Now we are going to create a function to accept this value as a parameter. Now implicitly this value is passed to this function as a by reference parameter, which means the area of memory that is set up to store this value is being passed as a 4 byte pointer to the area of memory that holds the value that we are interested in. Now passing variables as parameters to both functions and subroutines has a limit of 32 parameters. You can only send 32 parameters, which is quite a lot, to either a function or a subroutine. There is also an additional limit of 64 kilobytes of information you can pass in the parameters. However, since you are passing many of these parameters by reference, you are effectively only passing 4 bytes for each of these numeric values. If you need to pass more information to a function or subroutine, then you can start to use user defined types to store your data in a structured format. If we create this function, we need to tell the function what type of variable this actually is. In this case, a long value. Additionally, this parameter must always be present in every call to this function. However, if you wish to have functions that have optional parameters, which are not mandatory, you can declare using the word optional as so. So any call to this function will accept either one or two parameters. To handle optional parameters, the easiest way to do it is as follows. You can perform a test to see whether the parameter has been passed or not by using is missing. If the value is missing, then you can quite easily set your local variable up to have some default value. Otherwise, your local variable can be equal to the value that has been passed. This gives you a facility to use functions and subroutines in different ways. When passing a parameter to a function or subroutine, there are three options. The parameters by default are passed by reference, as so. Passing it by reference passes a 4 byte address pointer to where the data is actually stored. This is the default and you don't actually need to put by reference in, it will default to that all the time. 
In this case, the original data can be modified by the procedure itself. So if you pass a long value into this function, then any change to long value will be reflected in the routine that called this. The second option is by val. With by val, then a copy of the data is actually passed to the subroutine or function. Passing it this way would mean that you can make changes to the value without them being reflected in the original column routine. The third option is by copy. By copy is in fact a special case. This is mostly a hybrid of by ref and by val. The original data is copied to a different location in memory and a 4 byte address pointer is passed to the called routine. Passing it by value is the least efficient way of doing it because obviously it will pass the full size of the variable. So if this was a string it would pass the full size of the string. By using by copy then you're ensuring that the data can't be changed in the original coin routine but has passed the most efficient method. If you're wishing to pass large amounts of information to your subroutine what we can do is we can use a user-defined type. If we set up one of the user-defined types we used in one of the previous videos called UDT car. Now we can prepare this at the top of our code. UDT car stores four pieces of information in one structure. Three strings and one long. And we are populating the value of each of these elements and we're going to pass this to a subroutine. All we need to do is to pass the name of the user defined type. In the subroutine we merely have to put the name of the parameter in and declare its type. Having passed the information this way you can then use the information within your subroutine as so. Since the user defined type is a fixed length string we can trim any additional spaces off the end using the trim command and we can output this to a log. And if we run this program now, there we have the information coming out. Now we can also pass the information by a pointer. First we declare a pointer variable and use the var pointer command to define it. Then we need to call new routine to accept our pointer and all we're passing is effectively this long value. Now in here we need to define the past parameter. Now we're going to use byval in this case to say that we're picking up pcars as a pointer to this user defined type. And just as we did before we can define a local string and we can put the value into this using the pointer. And again, since this is a fixed length string, we can use the trim command to trim off any extra spaces. And then we'll make a call to a log to show that the value we get back is exactly the same. There we go. First one by type and the second one by pointer displaying exactly the same information. Now we can pass entire arrays to a subroutine or a function. If we set up some data for an array, we can pass the entire array to a function. Now arrays by definition are always passed by ref so you don't have to put by ref in and if you're passing the entire array you just need to give the name of the array and a couple of brackets after it and if we create a function to accept this parameter we may have to tell the function that this is indeed a string array. and we can output elements of the array to a log. As so. Now the fact we're passing this by reference 
what we can do is we're, we're pushing the information that's in there now, i.e. Fred and Susan, out to the log. We can then attempt to amend the first element. And when we go back to our called routine, we will output the values again to see if it has changed. So if we run that now, we'll see that the original information, Fred and Susan, is there. And when we go back to the original routine, it has now been updated. So passing our array by reference allows the function that's been called to update the original information. If you don't want to pass the entire array, but only need to pass one element of the array, you can call your routine like this. This is effectively passing just a string. As such, it merely needs to be declared as a string in the function that's called. As so. Now, by default, this has been passed by reference. If we run that now, you'll see the value is passed as Tom. If we want to demonstrate the use of the by value, we're picking up the str name by reference. We're putting that value into a new variable called new name. We will then call a new function. And having done that, we will output the log. So, having called this new function, passing a parameter, we're going to change the value of that parameter in the new function. And then, having called that, we will print out the original. And we'll see if there's been a change. So, if we create this new function, using by val for the parameter. And we'll take the variable we've been given, and we will amend it by adding on a couple of characters to the end. Then, just to be sure, we have indeed updated it. We'll print it out to the log. So the value should come in as Tom. We should print out the original value, and then we should put, print out the amended value. So there we go. We've passed the original value as Tom. We've amended it by adding on two asterisks at the end. But the original value is still the same. So using by value this way demonstrates that you can pass a parameter to a subroutine, safe in the knowledge that any change made to that variable will not be reflected in the original calling routine. So that completes this short introduction to passing parameters between functions and procedures. Thank you for watching.